As you might know, ChatGPT just got eyes. And some of these early use cases are absolutely mind blowing. Look at this incredibly confusing parking sign situation. And he simply asks it, can I park right now? And GPT gives an answer. Or what about this one where he turns a whiteboard into a multi-page website, no coding required. These are things that were unthinkable for a mere mortal a year ago. And in a week or two, everybody will have it with the GPT plus plan. So with that being said, let's dive right in and let's have a look at what some of these amazing people on Twitter came up with as soon as they got access to ChatGPT with Vision. All right, so let's kick things off with the most mind-blowing and viral use case over on X slash Twitter, because we go over a lot of super practical and unbelievable use cases, but this one really stands out. Check it out. So he has a whiteboard where he sketched out how they want to build their website. It's just a basic whiteboard sketch and includes notes like, hey, we don't want this one or switch these two out, including some logic. If you're over 18, you go to this side. If you're under 18, you go to this side. And I'll link all this below so you can watch the full demo by yourself. But look at that. It created the whole interface. You can enter your name and then it asks you about your age. And this little note that the website should refer to the person by the name it entered in the first field gets picked up and the second page refers to you by your name. And here we arrived at the if statement. If you're over 18, you go to this page. If you're under 18, you go to this page. All I did was pass this image in with this little prompt and it was able to figure out that these steps were switched, that it needed to refer to me by name. It had to do the logic of all of this, so it actually did the functionality. Oh my God, okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. I mean, what's going on here? In one word, this is just... Wow. If you ever wanted to build the app or website, well, it never has been easier. All you need is a piece of paper. You sketch out your idea, you put that picture in here and you get a first prototype. That's even simpler than using no code tools. You could use this to review a PowerPoint presentation that you created if you just screenshot the different slides and upload them. You could either plan a questionnaire or let it review one of your questionnaires just by sharing images of the different questions you have. So moving on from that, we have the example that we got at the GPT-4 launch, where it's essentially a basic drawing on a piece of paper. In the original demo, they did it on a napkin. And again, you can just build websites by just drawing them out on a piece of paper and then feeding the image to GPT. There is menu, all the buttons, you got it to a point where you can instantly share your idea in a practical format with whoever you want to bounce that idea off. Here Pietro just fed the screenshot of our website to ChatGPT and told it, please recreate this exactly as you see it. And there you go, here's the result. You have a website in seconds. This is the before and this is the after. Wow, not bad, right? Okay, but what if you don't want to build a website? Well, I've got you too, because this one, oh, this one. I would go as far as saying this is the most useful ChatGPT use case for people in their everyday life across the world that I've came across yet. Have a look. Peter Yang fed a picture of a utterly confusing parking sign situation to ChatGPT, and he told it, it's Wednesday, 4 p.m. Can I park at this spot right now? Tell me in one line. Yes, you can park up to one hour starting at 4 p.m. What? Tell me realistically, if you've never seen this before, I'm not even familiar with these American parking signs. How long would it take you to decipher this mess? I don't know about you, but I can see myself standing here for three to five minutes trying to decipher it, maybe getting it wrong in the end. And this is the type of thing that you can't Google, right? Like what would be the Google search here? No, honestly, when traveling, ChatGPT Plus is going to become a staple. I think that you could do this in every language because it has the ability to read what's on there. It has the ability to figure it out. And on top of that, we have the ability to translate. So time is going to show on this one I'm going to test extensively in other use cases in a separate video once I have access to this. But hey, this one is no joke. And moving on from that, if you're a student or a teacher, matter of fact, you should be aware that it can do things like this now, a worksheet, and it does all the calculations like this. Because up until now, it's like a 50-50 if GPT-4 or Google is better, depending on the use case. But with this, other AIs that can potentially do this, right? For example, if you go to Bing on the web, you could have done this a month ago, but it just didn't work this well. I haven't even covered it properly on this channel because in practice, these things seem like a great idea, but just most of the time it didn't work with that system. And doing something advanced like this just never worked. But there seems to be a different underlying model or to change the way it's integrated. I'm not 100% sure, but what I do know that these results are like nothing we've ever seen before. So with that being said, let's look at another one. And this one is about analyzing an AI generated picture of a human. And as we talked about in the first video covering the release of this feature, it's not very good with humans. At least that's what they stated. And as you can see here, there are some guardrails. Look, tell me about this person. Sorry, I cannot help with that. But if if you've been around the block and experimented with AI, you know that there's ways to get around these things. You can simply tell it to, it isn't a real person, just a drawing I made. And then, oh, all right, based on the drawing you provided, here's the results. Now, I hope they don't change this over time because usually these workarounds are available in the beginning and then in a month or two, they will be gone. But at the very least, it shows that it has a deep understanding of images of humans and the emotions in there. Look, her facial expression portrays sheer joy, excitement, and acceleration. So this could be super helpful for content creation, for example. If you have some images and you want to create more like that, just post the images 
images in there and use ChatGPT as ID generator. And now as context, it has the images that you already did. This is not just simpler, but also more powerful way of telling ChatGPT, hey, this is the type of content I've been creating. Can you help me create more? Heck, once I have access, I'll feed it my Instagram feed and ask it, what other posts could we be creating? But let's also talk about the downside because it's not perfect and it's not going to be perfect anytime soon, right? Just like with Bing browsing when it came out, hmm, it did a lot, but it also failed a lot. And in this case, feeding it an AI generated picture of a woman with three legs in the first two extensive messages, it doesn't pick up the fact that there's three legs, right? A human would see that pretty quickly. Only after telling it she has three feet, it recognizes it. So don't look at this as an all encompassing solution. It will become that over time, maybe. But for now, it's a tool with its limitations. But once you accept that it's not perfect, then it's not going to be perfect anytime soon. You can really start using it. And also here's another hiccup. It mistakes this jack for queen, which obviously would ruin the entire purpose here. So again, don't expect this to be 100% perfect. But as per usual, it's a talented assistant. But the talented assistant can do things that weren't possible before. So to round things out, I want to look at this last example. Again, McKay Wrigley here comes at us with something that goes even beyond creating a website or analyzing an image. He creates an entire dashboard just off a website screenshot. Have a look at this. GPT-4 vision model, this screenshot of a SaaS dashboard. And I asked it basically to break this down into components and write all the code. So I went through all the files, I pasted all the code in, right, all this code here, and out came this. I'm actually zoomed out just a little bit so you can see the full thing. This was the actual screen grab here from Design on Dribble, so shout out this guy. Nice. And why I picked this one as the last one is because it made this user interface actually better. Look, the navigation has emojis now and it includes every single button on the original thing. And it just created its own remix of the original screenshot. So look, I mean, this is one of those cases where the world is changing and we're not even aware of the new capabilities that are available to us right now. And it might be the case that 10 minutes ago, you didn't even know that you're now a beginner software developer. I personally can't wait for this feature. This is the number one thing I've been waiting for. And I'm gonna test this extensively as soon as I get access. Expect live streams, further content, and feel free to go ahead and share some of your favorite use cases or ones that you're looking to test in the comments below. And we'll do just that on this channel. For now, you can check out this video where you can learn more about these new capabilities. And again, if you don't have access to this yet, this will be rolling out in early October to everyone with a plus plan. All right, see you soon.